name is Nikita Vanku and welcome to integrating custom rendering engine with QML Quick. So today we will be talking a little bit how to do a custom graphics in QML, then we will focus how to use a custom OpenGL code in a QML, then I will talk briefly about my method uh, how to uh, implement a custom rendering engine in OpenGL with the QML, we will talk a little bit about the problems with this method and then maybe if we will have a spare time, we will talk about the other alternatives. So if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to, to, to write them into the chat box during this presentation and I will try to answer them. So uh, if you were uh, doing custom graphics in QML, do you surely know that you can always, you know, try to uh, rasterize, rasterize it like you are doing in Qt widgets? But you can also implement custom graphics using the uh, scene render, the QSG geometry nodes that the Qt provides. But those can be sometimes limiting, so you can actually use the Qt 3D if you want to use uh, 3D directly in the QML. But sometimes we just already have uh, our custom rendering engine in OpenGL and we just want to interface it into the Qt. So we will focus on the last point. And if you want to do that, you know that you can do something like QML scene overlay, underlay, but we will focus just how to uh, interface our own rendering, uh, OpenGL rendering code directly as part of the QML scene. For that, we can use uh, QQuick frame buffer object as a utility QT provided class, or we can implement our own. We will actually focus on both of these points. So what is actually QQuick frame buffer object? So if you, if you have never used this, it is just a simple utility QT uh, class that is uh, providing an interface for custom OpenGL code and uh, how to render it into the frame buffer and then frame buffer is later uh, rendered into the QML scene. So uh, what is actually the most important thing about it, it is actually composed of two objects and that is the QQuick frame buffer object that lives on the main thread and the QQuick frame buffer object renderer that lives on the render thread. So if you have never heard about this before, the, the make, uh, then let it be know that every QML window does have its own render thread. So if you have an application with multiple QML windows, you will actually have uh, at least like uh, every render thread for every window and then you know the main thread that uh, where majority of your C++ and QML items will uh, objects will live on. Uh, what is actually also very important to know that the in, ten, in, case, in a case of OpenGL only the render threads does have binded OpenGL context the main thread does not have any OpenGL context. So if you are want to do some kind of OpenGL work on the main thread, you need to create that OpenGL context yourself. So now we talk a little bit how to do the custom rendering uh, in, with OpenGL in the Qt, but also you maybe notice that this approach can sometimes cause a little bit of problems, especially in terms of the redundancy of the code, but also redundancy of the work. That means uh, if you have multiple QML components that is rendering your own code, you are mo most, in most cases rendering the same scene over and over again uh, in multiple times in the same uh, you know, render path. So how to actually solve that? So for, for, for this problem, uh, I'm using this thing, what I call the background rendering. And so what I actually does, uh, what I actually do use is I have, uh, you know, my QML items or my C++ classes as the backend, you know, for my simulate, my rendering simulation, my, you know, user interface controlling and so on. And all of these, like, you know, uh, properties in the, the states, they are all being sent to something I call, for example, resource service. This, and these all lives on the main thread. So in this resource service, this is like a combination point on the, uh, on the main thread. And then uh, every window does have something called scene provider 
and some scenes. So the scenes are just simple, you know, QML quick items that are just rendering, you know, the part of my custom, you know, scenes through my custom rendering code, OpenGL rendering code. And the, but they actually not actually not doing any hard work. The whole hard work is being done by the scene provider itself, which is, you know, synchronized with the resource service. And the whole, you know, the whole idea around this is that the scene provider will um, create for every scene, it will create its own frame buffer um, before actually rendering the scenes. And it will render the frame buffer into, uh, it, it will provide the frame buffer with the scenes. And then the scenes will just, you know, do a simple draw call that they will render the frame buffer on their own frame buffer. So I know this sounds kind of kind of complex. So I have, for this reason, I have prepared a demo application that is also available available uh, for everyone at the, at my GitHub page. So if you are interested in, then just check this out. And let me actually uh, switch to the demo application. So this is it. This is my This is very simple application. That is the only rendering that is does is this. Uh, very, you know, uh, what a nice watermelon. Actually, you know, I had to cut some corners. So it kind of looks like a cube with watermelon texture, but it is a watermelon. So this is my watermelon. And this is my separate window full of other watermelons. What is actually interesting about this is that you are seeing like six watermelons. One of them is actually using the QT graphical FX, you know, overlay uh, for it. But uh, to be really honest, I'm uh, just rendering this watermelon twice, one for each window. So uh, this is the main window and this is the like dialogue window. So uh, I'm actually doing, I'm rendering the scene twice. And then for each of the components, which is like four times the watermelon here and two times the watermelon here, I'm just passing uh, the, the, the frame buffer to the scenes. And then I'm just, you know, putting the scenes to the, this frame buffer. So I can have, you know, still, I can still retain the, the scalability and resizability of the QQuick uh, item. So this is something about the application. So, and this is everything I just described. So we can actually get into the detail of what is actually important about this method. And that is how do we implement this kind of the scene provider? So uh, the scene provider being the object that actually lives on the render thread and you know renders the, 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 the whole scene. So we can use, we actually cannot use the QQuick frame buffer object that we talked before because uh, we will run into a problem that we need for each frame, we need to have the, the, for each frame, we need to have the frame buffer from the scene provider being available to all scenes. And uh, using the QQ frame buffer object, we cannot uh, make sure that it, this will always happen. So for this case, we can actually implement our own something like QQ frame buffer object and do just with the QQ item and grabbing a few signals from the QQuick window. So I have a diagram for this. And uh, as you can see, the QQuick window provides us with some very interesting and very useful signals that we can simply connect it to our own, the, the, our own QQuick item, the scene provided renderer. And uh, the most in important signals are being the, 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 the initialize, the scene graph initialize that happens every time when, you know, uh, with the same thing as the scene graph invalidated. So every time the scene graph is invalidated and initialized, that is like, uh, I now have the data about the scene graph, the, the OpenGL context and everything. So um, this is where, where, where I will do my setup and I clean up code. And then for each frame, there are two very important signals and that is the before synchronizing and before rendering. So we are interested in the, in the before because we want to provide the scene frame buffer before the rendering or the synchronization is being made. So I will just connect the before synchronization to our sense function and the before rendering to our render function. 
and um, yeah this is basically it so like I can show you how actually these does look directly into the code so I will just uh, open uh, my scene uh, provide render and I do hope that you can read I will just make the font bigger so you have easier time reading it and so this is my scene provide render it's just you know interfaces of the key objects and um, it is it provides the D slots that I was just talking about so um, uh, what is actually very interesting is the synchronize function and the render function this function will as I was I was said before this one will run every time before the rendering so I will just you know uh, set up my updates to the objects and in the render function this is where I will do the uh, OpenGL custom rendering code and just rendering into my own provided frame buffer so back to the presentation and now we can talk something about the, 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 the update state so this is actually as you may be noticed because uh, in the in the in this architecture overview I was showing you the resource, resource service that is actually uh, the main thread culmination point that grabs all the updates all the variables from all my main thread objects to one point and this can cause some kind of bottleneck in this part when it's actually synchronized to the scene provider so while implementing by implementing desynchronization you can have two I will say two uh, the approaches how to actually do that you can either synchronize the the whole state each frame or uh, which actually what we are doing in this demo application uh, because it's very easy to implement but and we have very simple scene but if we will run into a very complex scene these uh, you know sending the whole state at the, uh, the each frame can be become very cumbersome so we actually have an alternative for that and that is just sending the update so when some kind of C++ model updates my you know textures or whatever then I will you know serialize these updates I will send them to resource servers and the, the resource service will send these updates to the scene provider which you know then we will have very little uh, data transfer so and actually I think what is actually very uh, important to mention is the Qt doesn't do FPS so if you didn't know the Qt doesn't have any FPS timer it doesn't do 60 FPS all time the Qt the QML scene renders only when it's uh, need when it needs to render so when you will be implementing your own you know uh, scene providers or just your own uh, rendering uh, engine uh, if you do not require the simulation the you know the the runtime simulation the real-time simulation then uh, you should also uh, maybe consider just rendering when it's actually needed to when you need to when you have something invalidated and uh, I've, I also have some other remarks and that is when you will be handling with the mu multiple windows then make sure that your scene providers only renders the scenes that are present on the windows so if, we'll, if we will have for example not just the watermelon but also uh, you know a pumpkin then and the pumpkin will be just on the one window then on that that means on the one on that window I will just render the pumpkin not the watermelon and, and so on and also if you will be running a real time you know rendering then you can maybe consider caching the whole the you know the other the Qt interface if you don't use animation with the layer enable so that it will not be constantly invalidated and re-rendered re and finally if you are using the Qt 6 do not forget to set the graphics API to the OpenGL so uh, just uh, you may be asking can this be can this be done without the OpenGL the answer is yes you can you can uh, do this with the diary X with the Vulkan whatever whatever you want maybe next time when we will meet I can show you how to actually do this uh, with the Vulkan and maybe I will try to find some like you know much more optimization than I'm actually doing right now with the OpenGL and that is everything for me thank you very much for your attention and if you have any question do not hesitate to contact me at my email thank you very much and goodbye